Hey guys and welcome to another episode. Today in this video I'm going to be showing you this process called electrolysis. Now what that is, is a rust removal process that I'm going to be showing you guys how to do today. Now behind me I have the old brakes that came stock on the Volkswagen Golf. Now if you guys remember in a previous video I showed you how to install larger brakes on it and those came from a Volkswagen GTI. Well since I installed those on the car, I don't exactly need these ones. And the funny thing is that I actually did this exact same electrolysis process to remove the rust on those brakes before I painted them up. And the thing is, because I picked them up used, they were in bad condition, they were rusty, and they needed to be brought back to life. Well, I used this same electrolysis process to do exactly that. So if you can see right here, I've got the driver side brake, I've got the caliper, I've got the rotor, and I've got the entire hub assembly right here. And as you can tell, it still works and spins as it should. However, the thing is, if I were to ever use this again, it would still work, but it doesn't exactly look the greatest. So for whatever reason that you want to remove the rust from, say, any steel component, so whether it be the brake rotor, whether it be the caliper, whether it be the spindle itself on the back, you guys are going to be able to do this exact same process and bring all of this stuff basically to a brand new standard condition. If we move down here, we can see that we've got the rotor, we've got the brake caliper, and the spindle all disassembled. Now, we can throw any of these things inside of our electrolysis process and bring it back to life. Now, you guys are probably going to be thinking, okay, Milan, you've said electrolysis multiple times. What is it? Well, what it is, is it's when electricity and the steel react in water, you can actually transfer the rust from one area, so say one piece of steel, to another. So it doesn't really matter what you're using. So whether it be very hard to reach area, say the inside veins of a brake rotor, you can't get in there and sand off and remove any rust. But with this process, you can. The entire thing is getting in contact with water. And that is going to be our medium to transfer the rust from one piece to the other. So I'll show you exactly what I have right here to show you guys how to do this. So I've got a couple things going on over here. So over here I've got a hose that's leading into this plastic bucket. And I've already got a little bit of water in there. Can you see that? So we've got a little bit of water in there already. We've got two pieces of steel. And these need to be longer than that water's height. So if that's a foot, these things need to be at least one foot. So they're exposed out of the water. They can't be in there. They cannot be submerged in order for this to work. You're going to need a battery charger. Now this is what I use to slow charge a car, whether it be completely dead or if I need to boost it. I'll be hooking this up to a wall plug, and I'm going to be using that as my electricity. That's going to be my power source. This is going to be the power. This is going to be the means for me to change the rust from one component to another. So say that this is the rotor that I'm going to be working on. This is what I want to remove all the rust from, including inside the veins right in there. Now that's going to be very hard to get to. You can't get a piece of sandpaper and remove the rust that's in there. So with this electrolysis method, I'll be able to remove any rust that's on the top, any rust that's inside of there, and I'll be able to transfer it to a different piece of steel. So I'll need this, and I'll put it inside the water, completely submerged, and it's going to transfer from the brake that we just saw to one of these pieces. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get a plastic bucket, uh, a case, you know, anything that you're going to put the water in that is not metal. So this is plastic, so the electricity cannot pass through that. So with that being said, you're going to then fill that up to however high you need. So if this brake rotor is what we're going to be using, I'm going to get this and put it on one side down here. And if you can tell, the rotor is not submerged under the water. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to fill this up until it is. Now at this point, you can see that the rotor is completely submerged underneath. See that? There's the top of it. So you're then going to remove the hose. Okay, you throw that aside. And then you're going to grab both of those pieces of steel. So the first one, you're going to grab, and you're going to put this either in front of, behind, or anywhere that you want that has to be touching that piece of steel. And it needs to be a metal to metal contact for this to work. So I'm going to first get the other piece and set this in here as well. But I'm going to put it on the other side. I'm then going to get the piece of steel that's in front of the brake and put it on the back side just to make it a little bit easier and cleaner for me. Now this is going to work 
perfect. However, the thing is, if you want to clean up, say, more than one piece of metal at a time when you're doing this, you can by all means do that. However, they all just need to be touching. As long as you have a metal to metal contact, this is going to work and it's going to transfer from this side to this side. So if I wanted to, I could grab the brake caliper, put it in the water, and as long as it's touching the steel rotor, it'll work. You can also go ahead and use a steel coat hanger, bend it up and conform it to any really way you want, and this will work the exact same way. So as long as this is touching there, and say it's touching this, or it's touching the brake rotor, it's all going to work. As long as it's not touching that end, we're gonna be okay. So with that in the water, I'm gonna grab my brake caliper and I'm gonna feed the hanger through it. Now I'm gonna get a metal to metal contact on there. I'm just gonna tie this up. And now once that's done, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna get this, drop it into the water, and I'm gonna make it so that the hanger is touching the steel brake rotor. All right, so with this ready, we then need to grab our battery charger and take out both terminals on here. So we're gonna have to connect the positive end here on this side, like that. And we're gonna have to connect the negative cable onto here. Now whatever you do, make sure that these are not in the water because you could potentially get rust on these two ends. So right now the battery charger should be unplugged and this is just wired up. As soon as you turn this on, you're then gonna have power that's gonna go down here into the cable, into the little piece of steel right here. It's gonna touch the brake rotor. It's gonna go through that, touch the brake caliper, and all of the rust is gonna transfer onto this piece of steel. And this is the negative end. So we're gonna have everything go from positive to negative. Now make sure that as soon as you turn this on, you're not touching either of these poles, the water, or anything. Don't adjust anything. If you need to change something, so for whatever reason, make sure that whatever you do, you turn this off and disconnect it from the wall plug. Safety is gonna be very important here, so if you don't know what you're doing or you don't really feel safe doing this, don't attempt this method at all. However, the thing is, if you do know how to do this and you are careful, you can get phenomenal results with this method. So this dial right here, you're not really gonna be adjusting. This is only time. So if you have it set to hold, it's gonna stay like that and you're not gonna have any issues. So if you set it to 20, it'll keep at whatever voltage you have for that amount of time and it's gonna click down to zero. So the way that we're gonna do this is that we're gonna set this dial and change it to a different voltage. Now, if the more voltage we have going through the water, the faster this process is going to work. So it's up to you. You can work it at six volts, you can do up to 12. It's completely up to you. Because I've got a decent amount of rust, I'm gonna set this to 12 and leave this overnight. Now make sure that when you do that, there's nothing in the way that could potentially damage or disrupt this process. So with everything out of the way, you're very careful, get this dial and turn it to 12. Now you shouldn't really be able to see anything going on at this point, it's only like, hours into this that you're actually going to see something happen. However, when that process starts to work, when the electrolysis starts going, you're going to notice a very big difference. So tomorrow morning, when I turn the camera back on, come back in the garage, you guys are going to see something drastic. So take note of this now. You can see that it's rusted right now, but it's going to be in a completely different state afterwards. All right, guys, so this is the next morning. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the machine and then I'll be able to remove both the negative and the positive ends down here. So, if you can tell in the water, you can already see how gross all this stuff is. You can see that the rust has lifted itself up from the steel pieces. So, when you take this piece, you should see that, oh, look at that. That's nice. Okay, we'll set that aside. I'm gonna take out the other piece of steel, but before I do that, I'm gonna see if I can take out the brake. So what it did is it removed a lot of the surface rust. Now I'm probably gonna have to go in afterwards with a wire brush just to get off uh, the little stuff that's flaked on top. But this is very, very clean. Look at this, look at all the rust that's like basically lifted up from the steel components and now suspended in the water. Now just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm gonna dump this water out just so I can get the steel brake rotor and then show you guys what it looks like. So now we have a brake rotor. And it looks a lot better. Check this out. When you just touch the rust, 
it should just scrape right off. How cool is that? Now, because we only left this in there for a good 10 hours, this could get a lot better. If you want to make sure that there's absolutely no rust left on your piece, I would let this sit in here for a good 24 hours, if not more, just so that the electrolysis can get everything. Now, with that being said, look at this. It'll clean up a lot of the rust that's on the rotor, on the brake, on whatever kind of piece or component you put inside of here. So I'm just gonna take this out and set this bucket aside. All right, so check this out. I've got the rotor right here and I'm just gonna wipe it with a towel. Look at the dirt and crap that's coming off. The rust just like separates itself from the steel and leaves us with a pretty sweet looking break. Now at this point, we've got a good 80-85% of all that rust that was on there removed. Now we just need to wipe it off to get rid of it. As I said, if you want to make sure that you get a much better job, you can do this for longer. So let it sit inside that tub for longer than how you left it, and it should clean up this rotor even more. And the same kind of thing goes for the brake caliper as well. If you grab a towel, you should be able to wipe off a good amount of this stuff off. Now, if there's still rust on here that you still want to remove, you can attach a little wire wheel on a drill or even a wire wheel on a bench grinder. And you can just take off all of this extra rust that's on there. and it cleans it all up in a matter of seconds. Now the rust that's still on the brake rotor and the caliper, the rust that's on there, it's not exactly as difficult to remove as before. Because we use the electrolysis method, it's basically just sitting on top of the steel and with a little bit of scraping or a little bit of grinding, it'll come off in a matter of seconds. The rotor and caliper do look a lot better, but I'm gonna see if I can try and remove more of the rust on the caliper. If you can see that there's still a little bit of corrosion on the top side of it and even on the bottom side, um, so I'm going to stick it back into the bucket and start this electrolysis process all over again. As you can tell, it already made a very big difference because we can see that we've got our after product right here and we've got our before right here. You can see that there's a lot more rust on this than the other one. You guys can do this process to any steel components as many times as you like up until the point that you guys are very content with the results. You guys can go from a ton of rust on any component you want to absolutely nothing in like a brand new state. You can do this to brake rotors, to brake calipers, you can do this to any other component that you have underneath your car. It could be a lower control arm, it could be anything. Anything that's steel, cast iron, or anything else like that for that matter, will work. So throw whatever part you have inside the bucket, turn the battery charger on, and you just leave it. Simple as that. If you guys have any questions regarding the video, throw them down in the comment section below, and I'd be happy to help. Again, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. So after everything's all said and done, you can see that we've got our old brakes on the left and our new ones on the right. Now at this stage, if you want, you can leave it at that. And right now, this is bare cast iron. So you can leave this just the way it is and it'll work perfectly. However, if you want, you can go ahead and paint up the entire middle of the brake hat just so that that little area doesn't rust out like this. Set this up. Oh, and of course I dropped it. <laughs>